think brilliant okay so the recording has started welcome to tonight's career series all about resumes i'm rudy utschneider i'm this year's genetics president and yeah here to give you a talk about resumes so what qualifies me to give this talk um well i'm sure many of you are equally if not more qualified and may already be familiar with the tips and tricks that we're going to cover today um, in the end, there will be a collaborative session where I'd love to hear your analysis of some example resumes, as well as feedback and any personal tips if you have any. We are hoping to turn this sort of career series into a regular event, and with that, we welcome all suggestions and critiques that you have to improve our offerings. Uh, what's most important, though, uh, is that although, like most of you, I've written resumes, and have successfully applied and been accepted to university. I have also been rejected from several schools, and I feel like the rejection more than anything else has contributed to improving my resume because of feedback that I've received from those rejections. And so those experiences, like I said, in particular, are more helpful than ever uh, to when it comes about learning how to write a resume. And so as well as being accepted and rejected into school, I've also been accepted into internship programs. I've trained as a writing tutor and worked three plus years in an academic writing center. And again, like most of you, I've attended countless guidance workshops and presentations about application strategy and how to improve that strategy to improve your odds of getting into these places. So not to say that this makes me the most qualified, but I definitely have some notches in my belt that will help me give you some ideas of ways to improve your resume. And so first and foremost, what are they being? What is a resume? So a resume is a succinct overview of an individual's experience and abilities. And it's something that people often use uh, for education and employment applications. However, it's important to consider that many make the mistake of using resume and curriculum vitae or CV interchangeably. Uh, and this sort of definition changes place by place. Indeed.com points out that it can be specifically different between the US and the UK in that in the US, a CV is a longer document that goes more into detail about individual background and experiences, whereas a resume is a very short kind of maximum two page long document to essentially list out your qualifications. And in the UK, a CV and a resume are almost used interchangeably, which can be a bit confusing. Um, but this distinction comes into play in that there are the terms academic CV or employment CV. Academic CVs are shorter and match what would be expected of a US resume and employment CVs are longer and match what would be known as a US CV. Um, but regardless of your definition, there's no necessarily right or wrong way to apply or fill out these different application forms. But just to give you an idea for this talk, we will be talking about resumes. And if you're familiar with the CV terminology, that would classify as a sort of academic CV. So something that's short, succinct, and just simply a list of your qualifications for a certain position. So this next slide uh, is a great resource, not an exhaustive list, and nor is it the required order of components, but resumes often include name and contact details, a summary, experience, education or equivalent, skills, qualifications, and achievements. And for a little bit more information on those things, a summary is usually a one to two sentence long description of pursuits slash background. And above all else, it's important to be specific in this section. Your summary needs to kind of give recruiters a sense of direction and make it appear as though you have an idea of your next steps in your career slash education. So for an example, a less specific summary would be something such as, I'm open to opportunities for an internship in a lab. And that can be improved by being more specific and saying something along the lines of, I'm in pursuit of a wet lab experience focusing on cell fate determination. In this improved version, you're giving recruiters a better idea of where and what type of environment you want to work in, and also what specifically you'd like to work on. And this will shift and have a different model for different jobs and industries, but just the general idea of being specific and having direction is something you should consider when writing your summary. And then otherwise, experiences as a section tend to be a lot longer because people have a mix of jobs internships if this isn't the case for you that's okay uh just make sure that whatever you do include in this section is something relevant and something that is important and demonstrative of i don't know maybe your skills or something that you've applied yourself to i don't think for example a day shadowing someone working at 
an ice cream shop will be valuable if you're looking for a position in finance. But again, not to say that that won't help in a certain situation. So everything is very situational. And those are decisions that you'll have to make based on other things you learn about resumes and other things you learn from the recruiters websites. So next is formatting. This is the easiest thing to control in your resume and has the biggest impact on the delivery of the different components in your resume and recruiters often point out that it's the first sign of a rejection is if you have a poorly formatted resume that's unclear to read or too distracting in terms of colors and photo layouts. So first and foremost, like I said, you want to try to start with your name and contact details in a clear legible spot and throughout your resume, you want to choose a font and a font size that is no smaller than 10. Um, so for example, Times, Calabria, Ariel, and Jeremond are some examples of fonts that are easy to read and not too distracting because they don't have misshapen letters or jumbled uh, patterns, I guess, when they're all put together. And next, you're definitely going to want to establish an order within your sections. So sometimes this is done chronologically, sometimes it's done alphabetically. It'll be up to you to decide how it's done. There's no one right way to do this, but having some sort of order makes it easier to read and easier to understand your path of projection throughout your career education. And next is to leave space between your sections. So this can improve the ease of understanding for your whole resume and it just makes it look a lot neater. That said, you shouldn't sacrifice font size to make up for space. So if there is something that has to go, just try to cut down on maybe the unnecessary or elaborate details uh, instead of getting rid of space or producing a smaller font size. And then finally, unless otherwise specified, try to limit yourself to one page. Like I said before, a CV is usually something that's a lot longer and more detailed, but a resume is typically something that is just a list of your qualifications, essentially. So next is how to stand out. Um, this should be done with a show don't tell mentality. You want to let recruiters see that you're a good fit by showing them through your experiences instead of shoving it down their throat and copying and pasting a line off their website. Um, so it's important to consider that, like I said before, as this is a resume, not a CV, there obviously won't be room to write an essay about each of your experiences, but small adjustments such as reordering the experiences so that recruiters can see something that comes first that maybe matches what they're looking for on their website, or are just small ways to improve the compatibility based on the recruiter's first look. So like I said, if possible, adjust your resume to try to demonstrate those desired attributes listed on the website. And so that can be done, like I said, show, don't tell. And then also to deliver through depth. In a similar way as done with the summary, a trivial task such as admin duties can be totally reworded that, uh, in a way that makes you look a lot better. And again, this does not mean that you are miscuing or misrepresenting yourself or just saying a fundamental untruth, but it's just a way of delivery that will improve your perception through the recruiter's eyes. And finally, make it visually appealing without making it visually distracting. So tasteful selection of color and text placement can really go a long way and work alongside your formatting choices to make your resume super appealing and stand out uh, compared to those of other uh, applicants. And so biggest mistakes, these should be taken with huge consideration when you're writing your resume. Uh, misrepresentation is the biggest one. Employers are so good at detecting any sort of embellishment or exaggeration, and this will reflect so poorly on you if they kind of discover something that you've really built up to be nothing. So for example, if you say on your resume that you contribute 30 plus hours a week to a charity, but you don't do that in reality, don't write that down because employers will find that out and it'll just bite you in the butt. Next is poor formatting. This can, like I said before, contribute to unlegible details. So what the recruiters can't read, they won't read. And so you risk the potential of them missing out on a big achievement of yours if you have it in a weird spot or too small to read. So make sure there's no crowding and try to present your sections in a distinct order. And then the three final mistakes are all very easily fixed. And so even if they're your three main takeaways from today, try to make these small adjustments to improve your resume. So those being spelling and grammatical errors, not using a professional email and including a picture of yourself, especially in this day and age, 
the inclusion of a picture can go against the discrimination policies that a lot of recruiters have now. They try to do blind applications of gender, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, so that they can do a fair recruiting process that benefits both you and the company. So including a picture of yourself, be it in a different outfit or something, and if you're trying to portray yourself as a happy person, whatever reasoning you have behind it does not beat the reasoning of trying to avoid discrimination. So try to keep your resume straight to the facts and just about your qualifications. Next, we have our examples. So I have two resume examples for you here. I will copy and paste the links into the chat for you. So if it's easier for you to access on your own, uh, computer, you can look at that. I will also try to open them up here and show them on the screen. So we'll go through our first example. Uh, here we go. Thank you guys for bearing with me again. Not usually a tech wizard. Okay, so this was someone's example of an internship resume. It's from this website, Resume Genius, so credits to them, first of all. But also, just to note that my assumption is that the by Resume Genius would be substituted with someone's name. Um, but otherwise, you can see here, like we said, in the formatting and key component section, they do have their name, email, and phone number listed right up top clear for everyone to read and they have a summary section straight away when you open it so that is the first thing recruiters are going to see and so i'll let you all read through these a little bit if you have any comments on them please put them in the chat and we can talk about it otherwise i'll just point out some things that i've noticed so first and foremost is the lack of pronouns in the summary section a lot of people use this as a common tip i don't know where i stand on it personally but they try to avoid using I just because that's a very not conceited thing to use, but obviously it's repetitive and there are other ways to present your work without doing it in a sort of possessive way, if that makes sense. So just by removing the pronoun and starting off with energetic and passionate college student instead of an I am an energetic and passionate college student can change the way that that's received by the recruiters. Again, whether it's positive or negative, I don't really know, but I know the common practice is to avoid the use of that uh, pronoun there. And so we have a very simple sort of summary there. They talk about their aims. They talk about their experience by referencing their use of knowledge of advertising, implying that they've already acquired that knowledge. And that is something we would hope to see evidence throughout their resume, perhaps through past work or something like that. But it's brilliant that they are also specific to the company that they're applying to. That's something we'll bring up later in the end. But in the same way that you want to try to mirror your resume to match some of the points that companies are bringing up in their recruiting profile, you can also match a specific company's name. And that just shows them that you're attentive to detail, that you're paying specific attention to tailor your resume for their needs. And again, just the small things go a long way to contribute towards benefiting your CV. The one thing I would say uh, is that the energetic and passionate can sometimes come across as a very bland form of description. So in your details or descriptions and choice of skills, for example, try to be a bit more unique in the words you choose and try to support those through evidence in your experiences and things. And so they decided to start off their resume below summary with their education. And so that could be a sign that it's something they spend the most time doing. It could be a sign that it's something they feel best demonstrates their experiences and current knowledge of things. And so that will change obviously depending on who you are. I sometimes start my resume with my experiences because I feel like that's one way to stand out in a different way. Uh, instead of just putting a school, because sometimes a school, you know, it can be a bit similar for everyone else who submits their application. So again, something to do for personal choice, but their choice of education first isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just a choice and perhaps a reflection on their priorities. So recruiters will pick up on that again. Apologies if I'm repeating anything here as well, but just trying to really drive points home. And so following that education, they have their marketing projects. So my assumption would be that this is perhaps tied into their education. And uh, it does look like that based on the entering UGA's business plan competition. 
So this now kind of ties back into making sense about their priority with education. But as, as much as it is impressive that they have different projects to show, again, based on the fact they are applying for a position that matches that, uh, it makes sense that they've used these projects, but in other cases, it could be a sign of redundancy or triviality just because a school project maybe isn't as impressive to employers and recruiters as uh, perhaps an internship project or something done in the first place. So that could be a sign that this is the first application to an internship this person's done or perhaps their first internship ever. Other positives, though, from this section is that they've done it in a significant, in a, sorry, noticeable order. Uh, chronologically, so that's helpful as you're going through. And the bullet points are very simple. Uh, I would say that the font size as well, good choice and good font usage. And they made sure to define any potentially confusing terms, like the highest return on investment there. Even though they're applying to a marketing firm that would probably be familiar with the term, it's good to use clear language just so that there's not any confusion. And they finished this all off with relevant skills. So perhaps uh, what this person excelled in by using detail to describe their projects and things they maybe lacked in breadth of knowledge. So what I'm seeing here, if I was a potential recruiter, is that they've maybe just focused on their schooling. They've not done much outside of the schooling community, which isn't, again, a bad thing, but could pose as a potential negative if you have other people that are branching out and trying to get involved within different projects within the water community. That said, their projects do expand to people outside of their school, so that is quite impressive. And their relevant skills are a little bit more elaborate than those you would find in other people's resumes, so that is also potentially a good thing. They are also distinct with their uh, acknowledgement of language level. A common mistake is obviously just listing you can speak the language, but there's a very big difference between conversational French, for example, and fluent French. Um, so. Another section that they could have missed out on or added is qualifications and especially in marketing, there are very simple ways to get some qualifications that really boost your resume through just Coursera and other small uh, courses online, but small things go a long way. However, I'd say the overall positives for this application is that they were specific, they were career focused, and there was good formatting and good spacing overall. And so seeing that there are not any comments in the chat, we can move on to that next resume. And so this next resume was a college based resume and so perhaps one uh, looking to apply to a position, I believe post college that's what i'm seeing in the summary section sorry just took a second to read that but uh, similar with the other one they were very clear in their sort of name, address, email information and things. Uh, the debate about location is a big one now, especially with safety issues and stuff. Not that it would be an issue, but I think uh, in the 90s and such, it'd be a lot more sensical to include your location just so they could follow up with a letter in the mail. But in the modern day of computers and things, it's a little bit redundant and less specified by the company. Uh, but Again, that's personal preference. If you want to include your address, you can feel free to do that. Otherwise, uh, an email or some sort of phone number will always suffice. And so this summary described as a professional profile is a little bit long um, and could perhaps be spread out throughout their resume instead. But it's good that they're specific about the company, again, that they're applying for. Uh, they are specific about their abilities. Um, but they don't necessarily talk about future projections as much as just the company they would like to work for, but instead of English major looking to do X, Y, and Z at your company, um, I think that would be a little bit more beneficial to their profile as a whole. And the awarded multiple honors can go a long way, but again, can be included elsewhere. And finally, their use of pronouns. Not a good thing, not a bad thing, but just to be observed that it's used there. So that's just a takeaway for you again, whether or not you think that's a positive or a negative thing. Their education is very succinct, very to the side, as you can see. So unlike the pre previous person, it's maybe a sign that it's just a small component of their resume and they have other things to make up for it. And so it's, again, clear about year, 
clear about degree, clear about location. And so these are all very good things. And uh, I never know with Dean's List and awards like this, if it's good to include, if it's uh, perhaps not extending throughout your whole school career. I mean, it is an achievement in and of itself. Again, personal choice based on the career and things you're applying for, but uh, it just, you don't want there to be almost a plateau in your educational career. And obviously this isn't something you control, um, but especially with applying for universities and things, which I acknowledge this person is not doing, uh, it's really good to have your grades looking as though they're going up because then obviously your most recent grades are really high and again, something hard to achieve because uh, classes obviously get harder as you progress throughout your academic career, but just something to consider when you see this. Uh, still very impressive that they're in an honor society and deans us at all though, so very good to include on your resume. And then next in the professional experience, we see a little bit more unique uh, things compared to the last resume, uh, which again, this is not a means for comparing people. Obviously, you have different experiences, just like Jason Shen said in the video, it's more about your abilities than it is about your experience. But there are different ways to demonstrate your abilities. And I think trying to do that in the broader community is a really good way to do that. So their bullet points are succinct, straight to the point. Uh, they have a very clear to read font. I just want to double check with the coloring because uh, I know red green color blindness is kind of an epidemic and I don't know if that would affect anybody's reading abilities of this, but otherwise I think it does add a light touch of uniqueness to this resume as a whole. And I think punctuation is potentially something to consider. I never know if it's considered in the grammar topic of resumes, but some people use punctuation, some people don't. So whatever you do decide on, try to keep it consistent throughout your entire resume. And again, they do it in some sort of chronological order, which is really helpful as a recruiter if you're scrolling through this. And they have spoken about not only things that they've achieved, but where they've achieved them, how many people they've done it with, uh, what they didn't do, which again is something that you should avoid if you wanted to do is being specific about timings. This goes back to that misrepresentation I was talking about. Sometimes you pick up a term time project and although it might seem to you as though you're doing it on a regular basis, when you look at maybe a tracked history of it, you're really doing something once every three weeks and it might change to once every four weeks. So trying to be specific about maybe the things you're accomplishing at the extracurricular activities or experiences uh, can be done without maybe detailing the time because when people detailing the detail the time that they've spent doing something is where the room opens up for a mistake that uh, could potentially come across as misleading to a recruiter so they didn't do that and i think it's good because you can still pick up on some very beneficial things they've learned from these different activities without needing to see like oh i did exactly 45 hours every week type of a thing and so the other thing as well is the consistent use of passive voice we're seeing a lot of worked and things in the first experience because that's kind of one that's closed off but in the current experience it's uh, labeled as present devising a thesis based on is kind of more of a current use vocabulary so that is again somewhere that mistakes could be made it looks like they've done it in a good way so a great example again and then finally we have their skills at the end and so these are good skills uh, and they are clear again about their language abilities and capabilities. Um, but is there perhaps some room to be more original here? Um, is there a way to maybe demonstrate this through other things? Yes, and I'm sure if we were to look at this more in depth, the examples and details provided through their experiences would uh, perhaps demonstrate some of these skills, but you can always add more. And I hope in their case that they made sure to reflect on the recruiter's website to see that their skills match maybe what the recruiter is looking for, because even in the small way, seeing that they're looking for someone organized and then putting down organizational skills is a great way to, again, get connected. And so I think that is seeing no comments in the chat, the end of our resume review. The general takeaways are different for both of these, and you might notice different things as an individual because Honestly, the resume is all about personal preference and how you want to be perceived by a recruiter. But uh, as it was produced by a sort of resume pumping website, they are generally going to be pretty good. And just as a good guide, if you have nothing else to look at, something to look at. So credits to Resume Genius again. 
and then to get on with the slideshow. So following our examples, let's go through some takeaways. Those being to make sure first and foremost that all the key components are present. And as we mentioned on that slide, these can kind of shift over time. But if you generally have your name and contact details first and foremost, uh, but then some sort of summary that gives direction about your career and education projections, some sort of experience section, some sort of education section or alternative if you have a different path there. Um, and then perhaps your skills and try to tailor those to what the recruiter is looking for. And then next, you should always, if you have the chance to ask a friend or a colleague to read over your resume. Because this is a resume, not a CV, and it's shorter, the limited space can perhaps affect the way that you come across. And so by checking with a friend, you can ensure that you are giving an accurate impression of yourself and not missing out perhaps on any major details like your friendliness or kindness uh, that should be reported to a recruiter. And as well, being unique and of course concise, it can be done in tangent. It's difficult as it is sometimes when you're very passionate about something and wanting to share about your experience with it. Being concise and perhaps limiting yourself to bullet points is a way to do that, but also being unique. So whether that's working in a color somehow or adding a different font style that's still legible, but a bit unique, uh, that will help your resume pop. And then you want to keep your resume up to date. So regularly maintaining descriptions of academic and work experiences as they happen can overall contribute to a more authentic reflection of yourself and even make it easier when you're going into these interviews because then you have the most up to date sort of reference and description of your different activities and involvements with your roles. And so finally, just to give you all some takeaways, I will post these links online somewhere, but these are just references for general common resume mistakes, some resume templates that you can download and try to imprint your own information on, and then other links that are guides to different jobs and opportunities, as well as different places that you can go to for specific guidance. So LinkedIn has some monitors that you can reach out to. They also have their own um, careers services and suggestions. So you can feel free to check those out to improve your uh, resumes. And then also the resource you should be using above all else is UCL Careers. Their website alone is super helpful, but they also offer a service for specific meetings. So you can meet with them, get feedback, get advice, and try to establish a greater confidence in your application portfolio through them. And so they will also have any other resources you need, whether it's to alumni or to recruiters to get a better picture of what different people would look for in those roles. So just use your tools because they are available to you. And so yeah, overall, thank you all for watching this if you're tuning in now through YouTube or for attending the session today. Um, it was just very basic coverage of resumes, but feel free to please reach out and give us any tips that we could implement into future sessions. There will be another career sessions in two week time uh, following along in this series. And so that will be, um, it's still undecided, but perhaps tailored more towards CVs or interviews. So definitely helpful and definitely something you can use as a takeaway, whether you branch into STEM degrees or decide to go somewhere else. Um, but yeah, thank you for coming.